So now we are going to discuss Moria machines. Moria machines are created by E. F. Moria during 1956. So actually these machines are finite automata with output. So we have in the discussion of the finite automata. In case of the finite automaton, the basic intuition is to design the mathematical model of a computer. So in case of the FA finite automata, we have the input string. The input string can be considered as the program as well as the input. So a string you can consider as the program and the individual symbols in the string can be considered as the instruction. So once mas your machine is going to read the uh, symbol one by one, this means your machine, you may in, in make the an analogy that your machine is going to execute the instructions one by one. And it is going to transit from one state to the other state and it can modify the contents of the memory. So one thing which is not obvious in case of the finite automata is the output. We can think the whole state as the output. So in case of the Murray machine, when you give some input strings, then your Murray machine is also going to produce the output. So explicitly here you are going to get the output. Murray machines is a collection of six things. Can formally you can define a Mori machine is a six tuple m is equal to we can de denote the machine by writing m so a Mori machine is a six tuple m is equal to q sigma o q0 delta beta where q is a again <coughs> q just like in case of the finite automaton we have the q is the finite set of states here q is the finite set of states and sigma is finite alphabet of input symbol. Your input string consists of the symbols from the sigma. Now you need to tell that what symbol you want to print. So the alphabet O, O is the which is finite alphabet of the output symbols. So you have to define, you have to, you have to define the alphabet O, what symbols you are going to print you can have as many symbols so, but o is the finite alphabet of the output symbols q0 is is an element of the q and this is considered as the start state of the machine means your machine is going to start from the initial state and you can also you can say initial state or you can say start state both are same delta is the transition function so delta defines how your machine is going to transit on behalf of the input. So you can say that delta is defined as q cross sigma and output is any one element from the q. Means your machine goes to any one of the element of the q. And beta is the output function and you can define the beta as q defined for the every q and it gives the for every q it takes the input as the state and it gives the output any one output from the output alphabet it corresponds to every state actually we have some output so as soon as your machine means as soon as the Mori machine is going to enter to some state it is going to produce the output so in diagram you can denote like this assuming that P and Q. P and Q belongs to the state of the machine. And you have the output is 0 or 1. And these output symbols are from the output alphabet O. And we have some input alphabet symbol A and B. These belongs to the sigma. So how a machine is going to transit from one state to other state and it is going to produce the output. So if say for example if your machine is at the state P. So as soon as your machine is at the state P, it is going to produce some output. Assuming that as soon as your machine is going to enter to the state P, it is going to produce the output 0. And 0 is from the output alphabet. So you can 
you can denote by writing this p is less zero this means your machine is going to enter to the state p and it is going to produce the output zero now if from this state your machine can take the input from the sigma and if your input is a for example if your machine takes the input a it can transit to the other state it may go to the state q okay. and as soon as it is going to enter to the state q assuming that it is going to print one so you can denote like this so and this says that your machine presently at the state p and the output of the state p is zero and when your machine is going to take the input a from the state p it, it is going to transit to the state q means it is going to enter to the state q and as soon as your machine is going to enter to the state q it is going to produce the output one and say if you have the if you are at the q and your input can be say for example b and for the b if machine decides to be in the same state then you can make the loop like this this means if you are at the state q and you if your input is b then your machine remains in the same place and it is going to produce the output one so this is the notion of your Mori machine when you are in this state say for example if you are at the state p then your machine has output zero when you are at the state p and you, your input is a then your machine goes to the state q and it is as soon as you are going to enter to the state q you have the output one whenever you are at the state q input is b and your machine remains in the same place means to the same state this means the output one is produced and when you are reading the next b your machine is again remain in the same place and output is this so this is the output so from the state p if you are having the substring like this then you are getting the output like this so this is the way your machine is going to produce the output here since we are interested for the output actually in this machine the final state is not important here so actually in the definition we have not mentioned the final state so as in the case of the Mori machine we are not going to accept the language there is no concept of acceptance or rejection and hence in this machine the final state is not mentioned but you can <coughs> mention the start state of your machine so out of the states in the Mori machine you have to designate some state as the start state like if you can if you want to make the p as the start state then you can designate like this so p is now the start state so here you can say this is the start state or you can say this is the initial state both are same however initial state is also not important always so this is the definition of your Mori machines so Mori machines are used to produce some kind of output and we can say that on behalf of the input string once you design the machine your Mori machine is going to print some output let us see some example so you may be interested to count the number of times your substring double a b occurs in the long string x so for this case we can design the Mori machine for this for counting so how we can design the Mori machine for this counting so you can say in Mori machine your machine should start from the initial state so you, q0 is the initial state and we have to give the output also so as soon as we are in the initial state so assuming we are going to we are having the output 0 so q0 is less 0 you can this is the initial state now actually we are interested for counting the substrings double a b so we are interested to count the substring double a b okay so this means your <coughs> if you have the input is b if you are at the state q0 and your input is b then we don't worry about this you can remain in the same place but when your input is a when input symbol is a then you can transit the state 
and you say you, you can go to the state say for example q1 and once you are going to the state q1 you are going to produce the output 0 so q1 is less 0 so for what you are going to the state q1 for the input a now if you are at the state q1 and then you have the input the a okay so you can go to the state say for example you can go to the state q2 and output is 0 so you are going to the state q2 and output is 0 whenever you are at the state q2 you are going to the state q3 and you have to produce the output 1 because the pattern is on now so this is the state you are going to enter for what for the input b so if you have the pattern a a b so we have once you are at the state q0 you have the output 0 once you are at the q1 you have the output 0 q2 output 0 but whenever you are going to enter to the state q3 you have the output 1 means so why it is so because you have found the pattern a a b so you have to define the transition for the state q1 also you have defined the transition for the input a if you are at the state q1 and your input is b so where you can move if you are at the state q1 and input is b you can again start finding the substring so you you have to you should go to the initial state for the case of b now if you are at the state q2 and input is a so say that you are at the state q2 means you have double a here and now you can have any number of a here you will stay in the same place so for the if you are at the state q2 and input is a then you remain in the same place and whenever you have the input b you are going to the state q3 so double a b pattern match whenever you are at the state q3 and input is a so where you can go you should go to q1 you can you should go to the state say for example q1 or what for the input a because this is on getting a you are going to the state q1 and from again if you are getting a from the state q1 you are at the q2 and once you have the b you should enter to the state q3 because pattern is found but whenever you are at the state q3 and input is b then again you have to found the pattern a double a b so you have to go to the initial state for this case you have to go to the initial state this is for what this is for b so you have defined the transition for every state you have defined the transition for the state q0 whenever you have the b you are remain in the same place for the case of a you transit the state to the q1 from q1 for the a you are going to the state q2 and for b you are at the going to the q0 from q2 for the a you remain in the same place for b you are going to the q3 if you are at the q3 for the input a you are going to the state q1 and for the input b you are going to the state q0 transitions are over so this is the Mori machine for counting the number of times double a b the substring double a b is found in the long input string once your Mori machine stops then we have to see the have the output in the output table you can construct the output table so for output table you can have you will have some input assuming that you are given the input double a a b a double b a a b b if you are given the input like this then what is the output so at the beginning your machine starts from the state q0 and once your machine once your machine is at the state q0 what is the output it is going to produce the output 0 so you can say whenever your machine is at the state q0 your machine is going to produce the output 0 now your machine is going to read the input a your machine is at the state q0 and your input is a your machine goes to the state q1 so you are going to the state q1 and what is as soon as you are going to enter to the state q1 you are going to produce the output 0 
So once you are in the state Q1 and your input is A, when you have the input A, then where you are going? You are going to the state Q2. So you can say that you are going to the state Q2 and as soon as you are going to enter to the state Q2, you are going to produce 0. Whenever you are at the state Q2, your input is A, you remain in the same state. So you remain in the state Q2 and output is what? 0. Whenever you are at the state Q2 and input is B, so you are going to the state Q3. So you, you are going to the state Q3 and once you are going to enter to the state Q3, this is the output is 1. So whenever you are at the state Q3, your input is A. Where you go? Q1. And whenever you are at the Q1, your output is 0. You are at the state Q1 and your input is B. So you can see here. You are at the state Q1 and your input is B. So you are going to the state Q0 and as soon as you are going to the state Q0, you are going to produce the output 0. You are at the state Q0 and you have the input B. So you remain in the same place means you are still in the state Q0 and output is 0. You are at the state Q0 and input is A. So whenever you are at the state Q0 and input is A, you are going to the state Q1. So you are going to the state Q1. And you are, whenever you are at the state Q1, you are going to produce the output 0. Now, at the state Q1, you have the input A. So for the input A, you are going to the state Q2. So you are going to the state Q2. And as soon as you are going to enter to the state Q2, you are going to produce the output 0. Whenever you are at the state Q2 and input is B, where you are going? When you are at the state Q2, input is B, you are going to the state Q3. Q3 and output is what? Output is 1. So whenever you are at the Q3 and input is B, so you are going to the state, you are at, whenever you are at the Q3 and input is B, you are going to the state Q0. So you are at the Q3, input is B, you are going to the state Q0 okay and as soon as you are going to enter to the state Q0 output is 0 and here now your input exhaust your machine your machine reads the input completely so on reading the input completely this is the output you have this is the form of the output you have obtained and see that how many times once you have in this for this particular input how many times once you are getting you have one and two for this given input how many times double a b is found exactly two times so you can see that from here to here this is the pattern you have found the pattern double a b so this is one next you are going to obtain the pattern from this place to this place so you have the one. So exactly you have the two substrings double A B present in this long string. And hence this pattern is found how many times? Two times. And therefore in the output you are getting two times two number of ones. So whenever you have the output, you can see how many number of ones are there. And the number of ones denotes actually the number of times you have observed the machine has observed the pattern double a b so this is the important actually the final state in the case of the Mourier machine is not important as we are not going to accept any language we are not saying that we are going to recognize the language 